Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So 17 years ago, there was a Nerf Full Auto Blaster. Now you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, 17 years? How would the Full Auto possibly be 17 years ago? It's gonna shoot like one dart per second. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All these years later, and that is still just as magical, mesmerizing, and amazing as it was back when this thing was a big deal. This is the End Strike Mag Strike, and it is one of my favorite blasters ever invented. <laughs> So the Max Strike is a 2006 release out of the End Strike series, and honestly was one of the biggest deals ever when it came out, and in my opinion should still be a pretty big deal to this day, because after Nerf did this one, they really weren't able to recapture what it did ever again. Yeah, sure you have the Rapid Fire 20, but honestly, the removable clips are better than the rotating cylinder in my eyes. I do plan on getting a rapid fire 20 and reviewing it, but that's future me's problem. When this thing came out, it was terrifying. And even in some situations, it can still be terrifying today. Mainly it's terrifying if someone else owns one of these, but not you. Because if you bring this thing to a stock class Nerf war, especially back in the end strike days, Equipped with this blaster and a few extra clips, you already won the game before it started, period. This thing not only shoots way faster than every other blaster, but outperforms every other end strike blaster, and it really does. This thing is shooting almost 70 FPS at a caveat. I will explain the caveat later. First, let's start with the design. This was a design that I really didn't like for the longest time, up until I got this blaster in person from the moment that I originally saw it. I thought it was way too chunky up at the front, this giant ugly looking bladder sticking out of the back with the, the this black stock thing on it that just seems shoehorned in. What is this? What is this up here? Why is this there? There's a tack rail on it for no reason. You're never gonna put anything there because the clip goes up. The stupid priming bar sticking out of the front. I did not like the way that this thing looked at all. And now I have this blaster in person and honestly the design has grown on me quite a bit. And I kind of regret not getting this thing sooner because I honestly didn't get one just because of the design alone. I didn't like the way the blaster looked and I didn't feel like getting one in my collection because it was just gonna be an eyesore but it actually looks pretty good in person. It's got a scary factor to it. This thing looks intimidating and it honestly gives off vibes of a paintball gun. My fingers have been on the trigger because I, I can explain that, I swear. It's a two finger trigger with nowhere to put your fingers. So like, where are you gonna put them? All the way up here? That's uncomfortable. I don't know where to put them and just holding them out, it's like I don't have much of a grip on the blaster. That's why I'm holding it like this. I'm sorry, it's, it goes against everything I believe in, but I will address that more later. Let's just get back to the design, because I know Phase 1 Foam is screaming at me through the camera to get my fingers off the trigger. As I was saying, this blaster reminds me heavily of a paintball gun, mainly because paintball guns have this bladder on the bottom. And the thing is that I didn't understand why the stock was down here and it looked really dumb, but it makes a lot more sense now. You don't hold the blaster like this. You hold it like this, and it actually puts the stock at an angle that allows it to be braced against your shoulder. More on that in the ergonomics. I do think that this blaster looks good, but it is still a little bit simple. There are better looking blasters out there. Though at least because it's an End Strike blaster, they painted everything on both sides. End Strike logo and the Nerf logo. The End Strike logo doesn't even have like a thing on it. It's just the logo printed on. Thank you, Hasbro. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster has a main grip, two foregrips, and the stock. The main grip is almost perfect, but it isn't. It is a little bit too square. Mainly on the back side of it, I feel like these edges could be a lot more rounded. On the front, it's not as bad, but still it is worth noting, the grip is obnoxiously square. As for the stock, it is actually a pretty good length and it feels very comfortable to brace against your shoulder as this pad on the back is just kind of a very nice aspect onto the bladder thing. And you don't really notice the fact that the bladder is there. As for the two foregrips, this whole front of the blaster is kind of a foregrip. You're kind of supposed to hold on to it like this after you've pumped the blaster up. The pump right here looks tiny and it is pretty tiny, but it's pretty comfortable to hold on to. You can just wrap your hand around it and get a good grip. It's not the best ergonomic setup I've seen, but it certainly isn't very bad. How does this blaster work though? This is a clip. 
Stop right there. This blaster is called the Mag Strike, and it uses a clip. And yet with every single magazine-fed Nerf blaster out there, they refer to it as Clip System, when Clip System registers magazine-fed mechanism, not Clip System. This is Clip System, and it is called the Mag Strike. Mag. Clip. Hasbro. Were you high on drugs? But the clip has a belt lanyard on it, so you can actually clip it onto your belt. And it holds 10 darts at a time, which you can use as the shorter darts that it came with or standard full lengths. After that, you just put the clip right on the top. You have to align it properly, and there is an easy way to do that and an annoying way to do that. The easy way to do that is to look for this kind of ridge thing on the side that advances the clip upward and line it up with this right here. The other way is to align the other side, which is this teeny tiny notch, and try and align it with the teeny tiny notch on the other side, which you'll end up doing most of the time, but it is substantially more annoying than doing it my way. After this, you pump the blaster. 29 times. <gasps> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. <sighs> At this point, the bladder is packed full of air. And then you have this big two finger trigger. So whenever you're ready, let it rip. <laughs> And it is healthy for the blaster to, after you've released it, take your fingers off the trigger and then put them back on for a moment because there is still a little bit of air stuck in the bladder. I don't know if that's a problem with every mag strike, but it is notable with mine. You can hear audible hissing sounds after you release your fingers off the trigger after the clip has gone all the way up. I've just fired a clip. Hear that? That's what I'm talking about. And from this point, the clip is all the way at the top of the blaster. So if you wanted to change it out for another clip, it's very easy to just grab it and lift it out then grab another clip and lower it back down into the blaster provided you can line it up properly, which I fail to do all the time. Let's talk about the trigger. This blaster has a large two finger trigger and there is a very good reason for that. The two finger trigger connects to a valve rather than con connecting to a catch. So you basically have to pull the two finger trigger all the way back in order to release the air pressure. And you can see how it only does that once it hits the rear position. For this reason, the trigger pull of this blaster is far smooshier than something like a Retaliator, which has a very nice crisp trigger pull. But there's a good reason for that because this is using a completely different mechanism than something like the Retaliator. And the two finger trigger is a two finger trigger, mainly so that you can get a better pull on the trigger because you are meant to pull it down as hard as possible and hold it down until the clip is empty. Trying to burst fire this blaster is a terrible idea, and you are going to get tons upon tons of skips if you try and do that. But with the intense, absurd, horrifying, nugget tier rate of fire this thing has out of the box, I highly doubt anybody would be trying to burst this thing. One complaint before we get to the firing demo. There is nowhere to put your fingers other than the trigger when you're holding onto the grip. I am used to holding a blaster like this having my finger up and away from the trigger until I'm actively ready to pull it. With this blaster, you can do that with your index finger, but not for your middle finger. So even then, you're going to have your middle finger on the trigger if you hold it like this. Granted, that's a little bit better than just keeping your fingers on the trigger, but with my middle finger already on the trigger anyway, it just feels like an extra step. At the same time, if I treat this blaster like having a rev trigger there, it does make a little bit more sense, but it is still worth noting. You end up having your fingers on the trigger, even if you're used to holding it like you would hold a traditional firearm, and that's not a good thing. It's a pretty bad thing. Luckily though, I've had plenty of practice holding nerf blasters and firearms to know not to put pressure on the trigger until I'm ready to fire a dart. Say your prayers, target. <gasps> There's a tactical enemy over there. Tactical reload. Tactical pump. Tactical trigger pull. So the Mag Strike, a blaster that in some people's eyes is very outdated, in my eyes, 
This is so fun. It takes forever to pump this thing up. And that is one thing that is against it because the amount of time it takes to actually get a single trigger pull ready is very long and very drawn out. But when you do get that trigger pull ready and you actually pull that trigger down, whatever poor soul is standing in front of your blaster is a very sad man. The groupings out of this blaster are absolutely beautiful. It's not shooting perfectly straight, but it's not shooting all over the place like elite darts. In my experience, the groupings this blaster gets when holding it perfectly still and aiming it at the red, white, and blue target is a grouping about the size of this space right behind me, which is perfect for guaranteeing that you will knock out an enemy in that range if you're aiming at them. Even if you're aiming slightly to the left or the right, you're probably still going to hit them because at least one of the darts is going to sail in that general direction and knock them out. Okay, knock them out wasn't a very good word to say, but you get the point. You're going to tag people with this blaster if you're aiming it at them and you fire it at them. This is one of the most efficient and fun fully automatic blasters that Nerf has created. In fact, I would argue this might be the funnest fully automatic blaster nerf is created it is so loud it's violent it's aggressive it punches it vibrates when you fire it off watching the clip slowly rise up out of the blaster while just admiring the dart hose that is being shot out of the front of the blaster while you're firing it it is so cool it is so fun to use this thing and it is also an absolute pain in the ass to do maintenance on. Yeah, this is a rubber bladder that holds the air in it, which means that at some point it is going to start failing just like any O-rings and springers or stuff like that. I thought there was someone in there and it was just the heater turning on. I actually just like almost had a heart attack on camera. <laughs> But yeah, if you weren't experienced in replacing the mechanics of this blaster and trying to maintenance it like you would any other air-powered blaster, it can get kind of annoying and kind of difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Granted, I'm sure there's mod guides somewhere in the world that'll tell you how to do it. I haven't come across any though, so I honestly don't know how to help you if this thing does fail. But considering this blaster's age already and the amount of money that it costs on release, this thing has held up insanely well over the years and it really isn't hard to find them. You can find them on on plenty of websites like eBay for not too much money. I paid like 40 for this one, which is way more than it costs on release. But it doesn't really matter because I absolutely love this blaster to death. And honestly, if you're just looking for a good time that doubles as something very practical that you could bring to a stock class nerf war or modify to be absolutely horrifying, this is one of the coolest options and most interesting options you can go for. If you find one of these for a bargain, I recommend picking it up. Thanks for watching. Bye.